Hey guys, welcome to part 4. This is where we're gonna see the moment where Takua and Jalet became friends. Stranger, have you heard? We're falling back, and the Toa have completely disappeared. My scouts delivered reports from the other villages today. The news is not good. The Rahi are closing on all sides, and the numbers are too big to count. After the fall of Trend Crumb, I completely lost contact with the North March. Yeah, this Trend Crumb thing he's describing, it's a place, but uh, just a little trivia. It was named after this huge blobby meat creature that was used to keep Maanui alive for a while, and now it's glued to the back of some cave somewhere in his ass. I am not kidding. Anyway... We will not go quietly under the shadow of the Makuta, as long as the light and heat of the Great Mangai still blazes. I know of one maneuver that none will expect. I only hope Akama and the others will listen. Say, what maneuver? It is imperative that the villagers build fortifications and prepare for a final defense. I expect many Rahi to threaten the villagers very soon. Fukama says a Tor are gathering at the Kininui at the center of the island. We must try to protect them while they still fulfill their mission. The dragon must each send heroes to help the Toa at the Kininui. The Bakuda will not expect this. Hmm. What news from the other villages? You at least have seen some small victories. Excuse me? But Makuta's evil infection is still spreading throughout Ma Nui. The other villagers are holding on while they can. A nip who is so hard pressed, he can't spare me even one Yosui regiment. Not a single regiment. Hmm. I must know what happened to the North March. I have no warriors to spare, and you have proven resourceful and true. So I ask you, will you join the guard? I will join the guard. What do you need me to do? It warms me that you have chosen to accept our trust. Vakama will be pleased. The North March is an icy pass where Tawahi meets Kowahi. The Komatoran have been seen little during the past months and heard from even less, but it may not be that they are troubled. Silence has always been their way. The guard has a small outpost there, only reachable by cable car. They watch against Rahi from the frozen heights. They also keep watch on Komatorn. What the? I fear the servants of Makuta have taken all my scouts. Take this ensign and show it to the one sentry at the cable car. He will let you through. Then take make contact with our scouts in the north march and get a report from me on Makuta's efforts in the mountains. Yeah, I just recently got a vast and. I love it, it's really cool, but it does do some weird things. Like now when I look up something with a search engine, it like checks all the sites in the search results, so it's like the internet stops responding for just a second. But you know, little things like that I can deal with if it keeps viruses away. But anyway... Now this is a part of the island that you can only access after doing like everything else you can possibly accomplish, you know? Like once you be in all the other levels, this is unlocked. We're going to like one of the most remote just craziest parts of the island. And for a lot of people, it's their favorite level. You may pass. Yes! I mean, we've been to every other village. We've met five of the Toa. Now it's like for the, the most mysterious, you know, sort of <laughs> He's just sitting on this one little galley hook. He probably could fit a Matoran on that way, but I can't imagine it would be too comfortable. Basically sitting on his groin. And wow. This is just beautiful. It's really, really simple, but it's, it's just so slick. But uh, then you look in the background and yeah, you see this really pixely 90s JPEG. It is just awful looking. It's just kind of funny to me because you see this and, and this, the foreground looks timeless. But then you look at the background and it's like, oh, this game is old. This game is ancient. But you know, I, I think that just shows how it does still hold up to this day because the actual art made for the game is just outstanding. So anyway, this is going to prove handy. Uh, eight stone. So it's like a light stone, but it's held in a little can thing, which I guess focuses its energy as it pours out of one end. Anyway, I know someone was here, but, you know, they've obviously fallen on hard times. And this is just a really, really cool first set piece, because, like, you just, there's no one around. There's no music or anything. You're just thinking, oh, jeez, I hope whoever was here is all right. I hope I don't wind up in trouble. Ooh. Yay! Found a new buddy, I guess. <laughs> He's waiting for us. That's too cute. Behold, another one of my favorite characters. Ironically, a lot of my favorite characters are the ones that are just kind of there, not really the main focus or whatever. 
But anyway, before we go any further, I'm going to take a moment to talk to this guy, who apparently keeps a watch on this whole area. This just elaborate sheet of, of ice. I think this is a really, really cool idea. This is one of the coolest artistic things in the whole game. It's just so creative. So yeah, this is his station. Who are you? Go peek. Okay. Where am I? I do not wish to be questioned. If you seek answers, do so in Kokoro. There you will find meditation and contemplation. It is to Raganuju's way to think on all things, and from this sanctum on Aihu's peak one can see far ahead and far behind. In Kokoro we respect knowledge above all things. You must have great knowledge even to step foot within it. You are the one who seeks to chronicle this era, and so you will doubtless travel the icy drifts in search of answers. But true sight reveals many things, and knowing the future can be dangerous. That is your choice. Wisdom is ever the burden of the Turaga. I do not expect it from you. Oh, jeez, thanks. What happened to the Tamatoran guard? The Makuta led them into the ice, and I fear they will not return. Had you not come and saved me, I would be facing a similar fate. So, yeah, this is Kopik. He doesn't talk very much, and on the occasion that he does bother to speak up, it's something really, really important. So anyway, he's just he's such a cool guy. He hardly expresses himself at all, but it's just something about that mask. It's just so... neutral, but so quizzical looking. Anyway, I guess it's time we moved on. This is just beautiful. This art, I mean, this game is just a whole slew of wonderful art. Anyway, this is a fun little mini game. Like, they give you this clue just from looking here. It's like, oh, the symbol, and, and then the two masks, oh. So it's just a whole thing about correspondence, you know? This looks like fire, so obviously we put the fire guy's masks up here with, a, you know, the chieftain on the bottom and the toe at the top. Let's see, this looks like a wind current. This looks like a water current. This looks like little dudes burrowing underground. Oops. This looks like a rock. And, you know, just carry on from there. Just a simple, you know, simple minigame. It is kind of cryptic because people who don't know anything about this are probably going to have a hard time with it. But it's simple enough that if you can just make out what these mean, it's no problem. You know? Just a cool little minigame. And man, just look at this again. Ooh. Ah. Ugh. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> I love this game. It's not perfect, but but it is pretty great. Again, no music. It's like they're just building up this place. And look, you guys okay? <laughs> I love that. They just stand here all day. They don't. They don't mind. They don't even bother to brush the snow off themselves. It just falls off on the occasion that they move. You know, even though they don't talk to you or anything, it is nice that they go. Mm -hmm. It's just funny how their body language is so simple, but it conveys so much. Cause like you remember that guy in Anukaro when he waved to us, he like he moved his foot and he he stepped and it was in a really over the top sort of way. It's like, hey there, and then when these guys salute, they just kind of like, hey, hey, what's up? How you doing? Ah, uh, again, I love this game. This, yeah, it's kind of more of the same of the other villages we've seen so far, but, you know, I like it. It's still unique enough, just because of how secluded it is. It's like, Matorn from other villages rarely, rarely ever come here. That's kind of the case with all of them, but this one especially. And look, people hardly even come out of their homes. One of the only places we can even visit here is this one temple. And suddenly, music. Oh, take a look at this guy. He doesn't even wave, he just looks at you like, huh? Eh? Oh, man. He doesn't even give a fuck. Man, just look at these. I, I can't be bothered to read all of these right now. It's probably just a bunch of gibberish made to simulate another language other than the, you know, the typical English that the Matoran language actually used to us. You can click on this guy, but he won't do anything. Hmm. He's the one guy you can actually talk to here. Welcome, traveler, to the Sanctum. You may join us in our meditation if you wish. Nuju honors all wise Matoran that they may join in the seeking. 
If you wish to speak with your Torwella Turaga, you must wait for Matar to return. He is the only one that can translate Nutri's wisdom. What is the seeking? Written upon these walls and tablets are the great prophecies. To understand even a fraction of what they speak takes years of meditation and patient encryption. So it's just for guys who have a really boring life and a lot of time on their hands. Is there anything you wish to know? Who's Nuju? Nuju is a Turaka of Kokoro. His meditations reach into the past and into the future, and he has deciphered much of the ancient prophecies. He has visions. He does very little that is not significant in some way to the future of Matanui, and the Kanohi Matatu gives him the power to move objects by sheer force of will. Yeah, Mator, and they can't use their mask powers, but, you know, they, Toa, they can use them to, like, their full extent, and Turaga can use them a little bit. But that's how, that's how limited their power is. So anyway, so even though this guy builds them up, it's like, oh, this amazing guy whose, whose mind is so strong that he can even move things! So wise and amazing! Yeah, whatever. Where's Mataro? Mataro is alone, hunting Rahi in the drifts. You may seek him if you wish, but be warned, I who is not merciful, even to the Komatoran. Take this passageway to enter into the drifts. Mataro often leaves behind signal flags so that he does not get lost. If you follow them, you may come to him. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. You know, it's kind of funny. His mask is the most friendly looking out of all the Matoran we've seen since we came here. Look at this Eh. Ah. Such pretty noises. Such pretty art. You know, again, they could have just made one of these screens and let that be it. But no, they made like three. Gave you a sense that it just goes on and on and... And this is what I really like. First thing you see is one of these flags. So, you know, oh, it's one of the flags that guy was talking about. So, yeah, I just gotta keep following these, and I'll eventually find Mataro. Can't be anything too bad, right? Doesn't seem that hard. Ah, man, just a sense of scale. Again, shitty clouds. Beautiful art. But, yeah, you see some snow falling. Doesn't seem that big of a deal. Oh, another flag. I guess I'll go that way. Hmm, alright. Yeah, I can do this. Yeah, maybe that guy was just kind of exaggerating. Maybe it's not so bad up here. Oh. I remember that bird wasn't able to fly through this. This is where the snow starts blowing in your face really hard, and you're like, ah, oh, whatever, I can still see the flags. I'm, sh I'm sure I'll be fine. Uh Now, this is another one of those things that can easily take a long time, or be over really quickly, just depending on what you click on. The idea is that you just have to keep wandering around, clicking on whatever shapes you can faintly see in the wilderness, until you happen to come across a flag. You have to come across at least three flags, and then this area ends. But I once clicked on like 80, 100 or so screens. I counted them. This is when I was a kid. I just kept clicking again and again and again, and I didn't get anywhere. But you know, if you just click like 10 times, then, oh, there's a flag. We're already a third of the way there. Just have to find a few more, and then we'll find Mataro. But you know what? Considering Takua, as, as he's called, is a Tamator, and considering he's one of the people who lives in places that's very, well, hot, this must be unbearable to him. I mean, to any other Matoran, it must be cold enough. The Komatoran at least have some resistance to it because, well, they've, they, they've lived here for a long time. But to someone who just isn't used to the cold at all, this just must be... Uh, must be torture. Because, like, you ever... I mean, a guy like me, I live in Maine, and our winters are very long. And we have nice summers, but our, and our summers are pretty hot. But to someone who lives further south, our summers are nothing. But our winters are just hell for them. So, like, if I were to go live south, winter probably... I mean, of course, it wouldn't be that bad for me. I once was in, like, Texas for a week during winter, and it was just fine. But if I was there during the summer, ugh, I wouldn't be able to leave the house. But anyway, I'm just saying. For someone who lives, like, in hot places, a cold place, it just must be unbelievable. So, yeah, at this point, you can see I'm kind of getting lost. Sometimes you'll see a flag within distance of another flag. Oh, there we go. Didn't take that. Wait, what? Huh. Well, I can still faintly see a flag over there. And yay, we're nearly there. I think that's all the flags. And there we go. We're already done. Yeah. Someone laid this all the way out here. Who did it and why? Was it Nuju, the chieftain of these people? Did he leave this out here somewhere? Wait, wait, wait. Who did it? Beware the swarm. 
Mm, more cryptic, creepy stuff for a kid's game. And now things are starting to flash, because this is starting to go to Takua's head. He's getting delirious. He can't take much more of this. He's passing out. It's too much for him. Foreshadowing! It's Mataro! Energy. Rest. Wait, what kind of voice should I give him? I'll make him talk like this. You know, kind of like Jala, but a little more reserved, I guess. Anyway, Mataro is one of the greatest heroes of the entire Bionicle story. I'm not gonna tell you what he ends up doing later in life. But yeah, here's to you, Mataro. You're the best. Love this cutscene. Another one of the highlights, easily the most badass of the Toa. He was always my little brother's favorite. I think mine was Tahu, or Gali, I don't know exactly who. But yeah, he loved Kopaka, just because of what an impression he made, how mysterious he was. Now, uh, ugh, uh, I, anyway, the thing about Matar, I mean, uh, Nuju is, he doesn't speak Matoran, or English, or whatever. He speaks, uh, basically like animals speak, like like a bird. He just makes clicks and whistles. He didn't always talk this way, but for some reason, upon reaching enlightenment or whatever, he just decided to. And Mataro is the only one who understands him, so that's why he speaks for him. I think maybe there was one point where he started talking in, uh, in Matoran again, once Mataro wasn't here to translate for him anymore because he went off on some journey, but yeah. In my previous let's my, my previous Bionicle let's play of that Game Boy game, well, just just look. Thank you for saving me, Taku. You know what? Nuju isn't supposed to talk. I'll speak in his language. And yeah, people are asking me to talk like that again for this one, but I'm not going to because Mataro is going to be speaking for him. Maybe I'll do it just a little bit. I will translate Nuju's words for you, Traveler. I can't whistle, so yeah. This is the best you're gonna- Ah, I don't even wonder what the fuck I'm doing. He has been watching you for a long time. Your role in Matanui's destiny is more important than you know. Matanui sleeps, but you, like the Toa, shall be an agent of his awakening. Nuju knows that you seek to ask questions of him, and he will answer them. When you are done, he wishes to ask a question of you. Alright. What questions do you wish to ask Nuju, Traveler? Where are the Toa? The Toa will unite and find power in the joining. They shall merge their skills, their knowledge, and their wills to become wisdom and valor, named in prophecy Wairuha and Akamai. In these forms, they are the Toa Kaita. Hmm. What'll happen to Mount Nui? Nuju says that you must understand this, that in creation, there is destruction. In destruction, there is rebirth. There is no such thing as a void. All things are in flux. 
all right? I didn't really answer anything, but whatever. Everything in this game is just so cryptic. What question? You are the one that will guide the Matoran, but only if you have learned what was necessary to learn during your travels. With the Toa Kaida beneath the earth, the Matoran must fortify their villages and brace for a great battle. There must also be created an alliance, a small group assembled from whomever the Turaka can spare, to help the Toa on the final quest. Nuju's question is this, to what place shall you lead the alliance? Yeah. So be it. Nuju believes that you are the one who can accomplish this task. Take this message to all the Turaga of the villages, and they can begin their fateful preparations. Nuju believes in you, adventurer. Well, thank you. Goodbye. Please take this message to all the Turaga of the villages so that they can begin their fateful journey. Alright, so now we basically go on a fetch quest all around the island. Not so bad, you know? It's just a nice little chance to just get reacquainted with some of these places, just to reflect on things. And of course it's not good. Wait, 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 wait. How did I not notice this before? <laughs> anyway. I guess that was a hint system, but wait, wait. There's nobody you could see that if you went... Ah, oh, never mind. I'm totally lost now. Anyway, this will be simple work. I mean, you'd think that going all over the island again would take a really long time, but no. I, I've set up a path of sorts that I use to just get around really quickly. First place we're going to stop is obviously Takoro, because it's right down this zip line. Cable line, what? I'm sorry guys, I'm just kind of sort of running out of things to talk. But you know what, since there isn't that much to talk about in a, in a little quest like this, I'm gonna get around to some things that I've wanted to talk about for a long time, but just haven't found the time to, as soon as we test this out. Thank you, adventurer, for showing this to me. You are as noble as your reputation, and resourceful. I am sorry for having so little time for you, blah, blah, blah. We've already been through all this. So, yeah. Let's talk about Takua for a little bit. Takua was banished from this village because he never worked very hard. He was always getting into mischief. And he was just kind of a, a misfit, you know? No one really appreciated him. And there was one point where he apparently, like everyone was so tired of his crap that they outright banished him from the village for a short while. But, uh, the... The Turaga wound up in trouble, so we found his staff, and then we saved him, and everything was alright, and he was allowed back into the village. And now that he's accomplished more things in his wanderings around the island, these people have come to see him as a hero. Everyone respects him now. Isn't that great? So yeah, that's, uh, that's basically Takua's backstory. Hello again. Thank you, adventurer, for showing the- ah, oh, we don't even through this. Four left to go. But yeah, that's not all there is to Takua's backstory. I'm not going to explain what the origins of the Matoran are, what they were made for, or whatever, because I don't want to spoil much of the Bionicle storyline as a whole. But I will tell you this. Apparently, Takua was the very first Matoran ever created. We, right here, we're the oldest Matoran. Not by much, because all these guys are pretty frigging old, like hundreds of thousands of years. And they don't remember, like, any of their past, aside from the comparatively short time that they spent on this island. But whatever they did before, Takua was the very first Matoran. Isn't that something? Amazing. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Almost forgot to stop at one of these more, most important places. And yeah, I remember talking about the or the biomechanical, you know, partly organic, cyborg sort of stuff I talked about before. I remember that, but there's something else I want to say. It's about the Toa. Some people will say, but Bionicles are robots. When the Toa arrived on this island and came out of their canisters, they were just a bunch of pieces and they had to put themselves together. How can you say they're alive? Well, they were alive at one point. But they were floating around in those canisters in the ocean for a really, really long time. So long that all their fleshy bits died and rotted away. And then these guys had to put themselves back together, 
and wait for their organic tissuey bits to grow back. And then that's how their robot parts are basically held together. It's like, I just look at it as these guys being mostly mechanical to make them sturdy and, you know, be able to brave harsh conditions that no, like, ordinary human would be able to. But they still have enough organic bits to be alive. They probably have a very simple digestive system. They have lungs, you know, basic things like that. So, yeah. Thank you, oh, thank you, adventure, for showing this to me. You are as noble as your reputation and resourceful. They all say that. Good luck in your travels, adventure. May a new one protect you. Not much further to go. Only, only one village left, really. Just gotta go to Lake Carl. So yeah, most of the creatures in the Bionicle universe are not robots. There are a few beings that are completely robotic, and there are a few beings that are completely organic. It's very, very strange how all this stuff just mixes together, but I think it's just part of the charm of Bionicle. But it's just so cool to see these robotic beings who you'd expect to live on some, I don't know, something like the Transformer planet Cybertron, but they don't. They live in this, in all this nature, and they have like a tribal sort of civilization. These guys are still partying, and Taipu's still here. <laughs> anyway, yeah, now both their sons are playing at the same time. Yeah. Thank you, Adventure, for showing this to me. You are as noble as your reputation and resourceful. That's all the Draga, apparently we can move on. Wait a second. I just need to find a good spot and I'm gonna fly right back to Takaro. I can't really think of any place that we'd be better to go. I don't know how to get to the Kininui just yet. So I guess we'll just consult the leader of our village again. I wanted to be able to use this thing a couple more times because, again, you'll be able to see the different animations, hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> I love that animation. He's like, come on, let's go! So excited! Now, the guy I'm looking for, he should be around here somewhere. There he is! And look, it's Kapura! The very first Matoran we met in this game. Remember how shitty he looked back in the day? Remember how awful he he looked? Well, this is after these guys had a lot more experience. They've been working on all this stuff for a long time, so now that we get to see him again, he's updated, you know? This is Kapura 2.0. Looks much more slick and colorful and everything now, doesn't he? Hello. You are the Chronicler. I have been looking for you. Vakama wishes to speak with you. You should go to Vakama now. It is important. Where's Vakama? Vakama is in Takaro. What does Vakama want? I only know that it's a matter of great urgency. Wait, no, I'm using Vakama's voice. I'll make him talk like this, how's that? I don't remember how I made him talk in episode one. Anyway, how'd you get here? It is as Vakama said. I practiced and became skilled. I now know the secret out of traveling great distances by moving very slowly. It is a small matter for me to be wherever I am not. It is a useful skill. He's not kidding. I don't know how he did it, but I am to accompany you. Let us go together. And here they introduce a new gameplay mechanic. We're having a party now, like in an RPG. So anyway, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, it doesn't matter what village you go to. I could have just gone straight down the tree at Lake Carl, and I probably would have found him there too. I once found him in Co Carl. It's like, wherever you happen to go after you complete that little fetch quest, Kapura will be there. He will follow you to the ends of the earth. So he's not kidding about going fast by basically doing nothing. I still have no idea what his character's about. But yeah, let's talk to Vakama. Really get this plot moving. Chronicler, it is good of you to come, and thank you, Kapura, for fulfilling your mission so quickly. I see that you have indeed gained skill. The Toa have left for the Kininui to begin their final quest. We must help them, but our villages are beset by Rahi on all sides. I ask that you pursue a mission of grave importance. This mission is vital. The Toa and indeed all of Matanui need you now. What are the Toa doing? The Toa have begun their quest to destroy the Makuta and bring light and happiness back to Matanui. They have recovered the Golden Kanoe 
and are on the road to Kininui. In the temple is a passage through which they will enter the Makuta's dark realm. Once inside, the Makuta will attempt to destroy them, and they will be beset by Manas, unimaginable horrors that guard his domain. They will face these fearsome challenges as a Toa and there will be a great battle. I'm gonna try to sound like you did in the movies now. This mission is vital. The Toa, and indeed all of Matanui, need you now. The Toa are much stronger than I am. How can I be of help to them? The Makuta is treacherous. I believe he knows a Toa are coming, and is massing Rahi to attack the Kininui after the Toa have passed through. I fear he will attempt to seal the Toa in his underworld, imprisoning them there forever. Or worse, should the Toa attempt to flee, he will set the Rahi to ambush them as they emerge through the passage. With a horrible madness in front and the Rahi behind, the Toa are caught in a vice that will assuredly crush them. Hmm, what is my mission? You must defend the Kininui against the Rahi while the Toa are underground. <laughs> uh... Okay. I know you are brave and resourceful, but even you cannot do this alone. I can't argue with that. <laughs> you must assemble the fellowship on my left and right hands. Jala should remain here to control, to command his guard and defend Takoro. My left hand is Kapura, who is with you now. He will go. He may seem slow and strange to you, but his simple words often carry us a hidden wisdom. Go first to the other villages. They are besieged. But I have talked with the Turaga. I am certain that they can all spare at least one Matoran to aid in this task. Once your company has been gathered, you must travel to the Kininui. Its road begins where the river ends at Gakaro and falls from a great height. Hmm. Goodbye. May Matanui smile on you and your party, Chronicler. We shall face our own hardships here, but they will bear better knowing you are sped on your task. First, I'm gonna go to Ko Koro, or Kowahi rather. We don't have to go all the way to the other, to their village now. We just have to find the first Matoran that we met up there. And yes, as if one fetch quest around the island wasn't enough, now we have to go on a second one to collect party members. Then again, it's just a chance to reflect on things. Uh, don't worry, it's not like this whole episode is just gonna be a whole lot of nothing. Oh, but yeah. My username, Nick on Aqua Magna. I think it's about time I talked about that.